How's it going guys? Luis here and 2016 is coming to a close which means it's time for another tradition that I do on this channel every single year, my most anticipated games of the upcoming year, more specifically in 2017. Now two things to note before I get into my top 10 anticipated games of 2017. The first one is that these are games that I know about, these are games that are either coming out in 2017 or haven't come out but are probably coming out in 2017. The second thing is that this is being filmed in late December, right before January, so if some game gets announced January 15th or in February and you guys are watching this in July and you're like, why the hell isn't Persona 6 or why isn't Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild 4K for the Wii U 2 coming, like, on this, I don't know, whatever gets announced, that's why. It's because this is filmed in January. I, I assume most of you guys are smart enough to look at the upload date, but every once in a while you get those, you know, those comments, so disclaimer. Now with that disclaimer out of the way, we can get on to the video games. So here, in no particular order, are my top 10 anticipated games of 2017. First off, Kingdom Hearts 2.8. This is coming out January 24th, and it's a collection of three different Kingdom Hearts games and one for the PlayStation 4. There is Kingdom Hearts Dream Drop Distance HD, which is a remake of the 3DS game with the same name, but now at 1080p and for the first time in the series, 60 frames per second. I got to play it at E3, and boy does 60 FPS make a difference with Kingdom Hearts. The other two titles are Kingdom Hearts Back Cover, which is a cinematic cutscene collection that retells the story of Kingdom Hearts Unchained, that's the mobile game that just came out a few months ago. And lastly, there's Kingdom Hearts 0.2 of Fragmentary Passage, and that's essentially a bite-sized prequel leading up to Kingdom Hearts 3. For all you Metal Gear Solid fans, this is essentially Metal Gear Solid Ground Zeroes, but for the Kingdom Hearts series. Next, we have Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. I played this back at E3, running on the Nintendo Wii U, and it wasn't the greatest technical experience. There was a lot of frame rate issues with the Wii U version, but seeing the Switch version on Jimmy Fallon recently gave me hopes for the Switch version. Plus, I'll be at the Nintendo Switch event on January 14th in New York, trying it out on the Switch, so I'm looking forward to that as well. Overall, the idea of having an open world Zelda game that's truly open world and not just a large map than the previous game it really does get me excited to spend a ton of hours in Hyrule once again. And that's just the thing with sort of open world games as of late, like things like Minecraft and Stardew Valley. You can kind of just do whatever the hell you want. There is a story for you to do if you want to do it, but the ability to do whatever the hell you want, explore a cave, hunt down enemies, ride a horse, whatever the hell you want, you can do it. And that's pretty much what excites me about Breath of the Wild. Not so much the story aspect, but the ability to explore Hyrule at any given point, any way I want. Horizon Zero Dawn I've played a few times now, both at E3 and PlayStation Experience this year. This game, for one, looks absolutely beautiful. Every time I see a new trailer for it, I'm blown away by the gameplay, but recently I got the chance to see the game running in 4K on a $5,000 HDR TV from Sony at the PlayStation Experience 2016, and god damn, this game looks beautiful. I'm just really excited to explore this new open world in this new setting, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to start spending a ton of hours just hunting down robot dinosaurs, and I put that in quotes because Guerrilla Games has come out and said that they're not robot dinosaurs, even though you know they are. Come on. Spider-Man for the PlayStation 4. For so long have I waited for a great open world Spider-Man game. There was a pretty sick one with Spider-Man 2 that came out back in 2004, but since then, none have really lived up to my expectations. Now we have Insomniac Games working on a brand new Spider-Man game that looks absolutely freaking amazing. We got a glimpse of some gameplay at E3 2016 and a quick 4K look at the PS4 Pro reveal, but everything about this game looks promising so far. First, we have Insomniac Games who's working on this title and they just finished up their fantastic project Ratchet & Clank the Remake, and they've also come out and said that this isn't an origin story, but a brand new original story that they've been working with Marvel to create just for this game. Honestly, we don't know too much about this game, and it's either going to be a very late 2017 game or a very early 2018 game, but from what we do know, the little information we do know already, the game looks awesome, I'm incredibly hyped for it, just go look at the gameplay, it looks freaking fantastic, it's oh my god, so hyped. Persona 5 has been pretty much on my most anticipated list for years now, mostly because it was announced back around 2014, and even so, it's finally coming out in April 2017. I've actually owned the game since September 2016 because I imported the Japanese version of the game, and I've been able to understand a few bits and pieces of the story so far with the little Japanese I know and I've been studying. Gameplay-wise though, Persona 5 is a great game, and as a Persona fan, I love what they do with the redesign of the battle UI system, and bringing back features from the older Persona games like interrogating demons. I played a bit of the English version at PlayStation Experience, and I'm incredibly excited to play the rest of the game with the English voice actors later on. Hopefully it doesn't get delayed again. John Harden, if you're watching this, Atlas PR, please, I'm begging you, please, 
I have the game and I'm still excited for the English version. South Park The Fractured Butthole. I already know one of you guys is going to sound clip that. This is the sequel to the fantastic RPG South Park The Stick of Truth that came out back in 2014, where The Stick of Truth featured classic raunchy South Park humor making fun of Dungeons and Dragons like LARP and roleplaying. Fractured Butthole parodies the absurd large cinematic universes being created by both Marvel and DC Comics. Based on the trailers and gameplay we've seen of the game so far, we can expect the same funny, raunchy humor of the previous game, and I definitely love the improvements of the gameplay, like the reworked battle system. I'm so ready to revisit South Park and all the craziness that the town holds for me in 2017. Nino Kuni 2 Revenant Kingdom is the sequel to one of my favorite JRPGs of all time for the PS3, Nino Kuni Wrath of the White Witch. This is a game that follows the story of King Evan Tildrum, who is forced out of his kingdom and is now on a mission with his friend Roland to reclaim his throne. That kind of sounds like Final Fantasy XV. Not much has been revealed about the game so far, but what we do know is that the jump from the PS3 to the PS4 will allow developers to create more advanced systems and features like a brand new Kingdom Creation mode. While Studio Ghibli isn't working on this title like they did on the previous game, the sequel looks just as beautiful and still gives off that lovely anime vibe that the original did too. Uncharted The Lost Legacy Now this is technically DLC, but it might also be a standalone game like The Last of Us Left Behind, so that's why I'm adding it to my list. Revealed back at PSX 2016, this new game ties up the story of Nadine from Uncharted 4, but more importantly, it wraps up the story of Chloe from Uncharted 2. Having Chloe miss out on the action during Uncharted 4 was pretty bitter since she played a pretty big role in Uncharted 2, but now we'll get to see not only her story, but play as her in an original story with gameplay that looks heavily influenced by that stealth mechanics known from The Last of Us. Ukulele is a love letter to all the famous 3D classic platformers of the Nintendo 64 era. Created by the same minds that helped create games like Banjo-Kazooie, Duck Kong 64, and Conker's Bad Fur Day, Ukulele is a modernized take on the classic 3D collectible platformer that many of us older gamers grew up playing with. Everything from the colorful environments, the beautiful soundtrack, to the lovable characters, Ukulele looks incredibly promising. After getting to play the most recent beta build of it at PSX this year, my hype for the game has only gone up. Too bad the game was recently cancelled for the Wii U, but hopefully that means it's coming to the Nintendo Switch sometime in the future too. i definitely love to play that on the go, so that would be pretty cool. Sonic Mania is another 2017 game that's revisiting the gameplay of a beloved classic series. Rather than taking on the modern 3D gameplay of the recent Sonic games, Sonic Mania is made for those of the 2D era those that love playing games like Sonic the Hedgehog and Sonic CD. The game is a passion project with a development team consisting of well-known indie devs in the Sonic community for their work on Sonic fan games and remasters of the classic Sonic games on mobile devices. I got a hands-on with the game at its initial reveal in San Diego earlier this year, and I have to say, based on what I've played, it definitely hits most of the check marks that classic Sonic fans wanted with the new 2D game. It also doesn't hurt that the new soundtrack is pretty catchy and it features music from Hyper Potions and Nitro Fun. And those are my most anticipated games of 2017. I asked you guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Discord for your guys' own list of anticipated games. Down here is what you guys had to say. And this by no means are all the anticipated games I have for 2017. There's a ton of other games I'm pretty hyped about. But these are my top 10 currently, and that might change later on in the year as more gameplay gets shown off for some of these games and other games I don't really know about. But if you have any games that I didn't mention in this video, uh, let me know in the comment section below if you're really excited for them. That way I can learn about some other games I may have not heard of before. And before I end this video, I want to give some honorable mentions to some other games like Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite, Cuphead, whenever the hell that game is coming out, Scalebound, Red Dead Redemption 2 of course, Nier Automata or Nier Automata, I don't really know how to say that, but I played the demo on PS4 recently, it's pretty hype. If you have a PS4, go download it, it's free, definitely worth it. And that does it for this video. Thank you guys all very much for watching to the very end. If you made it to the very end, comment below the secret message. Let's go with your name is the best movie ever made. That's the name of this poster back here. I don't know if you guys can see it, but I actually do believe that. It's like one of my favorite movies of all time, so highly recommend it. Uh, and thank you guys all very much for watching. It's been a very great year this year, so thank you for all the love and support. I'll be here up in 2017 doing videos as always, doing the reviews. And like I mentioned before, I'll be at the Nintendo Switch event next month, so look forward to that in mid-January. And while you wait for my next video, you can check out my last two videos. One of them was a history or remembering the Nintendo Wii U, and the other one was a Q&A video with you guys on Twitter. You guys can also click on my face to subscribe, click on the Twitter icon to follow me on Twitter, which I highly recommend, and scan my snap code to follow me on Snapchat. Thank you all very much for watching, love you all very much, and I'll see you guys in 2017.